the beginning of the year brings a fresh start. And for many of us, that means going after some of our health and fitness goals, whether it be fat loss, muscle building, disease maintenance, or just improving your overall health. So in this episode, I'm going to give you a quick lesson on insulin, why it needs to be focused on, and how its effects on metabolism are the key to achieving your goals. Hi, I'm Harry of Real Nutrition MD. Regaining your health and managing disease doesn't always require medical intervention. The human body actually does most of the healing. We just need to put it in a position to do it. So what I like to do here is focus on realistic approaches that you can do right now to boost your quality of life through nutrition and other health strategies. If that's the kind of stuff you're into, hit like, subscribe, and spread the word. Let's begin. Before I dive into insulin, let's start by briefly discussing metabolism. Many of us have the idea that we can't reach our health goals because our metabolism is slow and all the fit, healthy people seem to be blessed with a fast metabolism. You've probably been told ways to help boost it. Drink coffee and tea, eat spicy foods, walk more, sit less. Chances are you've tried some of these tips with not much success. First of all, I need you all to understand exactly what metabolism is. It's a term used to describe all the chemical reactions that go on in our body to keep us alive and moving. And these reactions can be broken down into two types. Catabolic is breaking down molecules and tissues in the body. Anabolic is building molecules and tissues for the body. All these reactions require energy, which comes from either the things we've eaten or the things we've stored and how this energy gets into our cells is dependent on the hormone insulin. I don't care if you think your metabolism is fast or slow, whatever hacks you've tried to do to improve it, none of that really matters if you don't manage your insulin levels. And guess what? Nutrition is the main determining factor of all of this. Uh-uh, no way. Nutrition is also the one thing we have a lot of control over. So once we're able to do that, we can use insulin to our advantage so that it'll help us pursue and reach all of our health goals. All right, let's talk about insulin. A discussion on insulin could easily take hours of lecturing about the biochemistry, the pathways, biology and physiology, but I'm not gonna do that because I feel that there are only a few main points you need to understand in terms of reaching your health goals. And these three points are insulin is anabolic, it inhibits fat burning, and too much of it will affect cell communication. Firstly, it's an anabolic hormone. I mentioned the word anabolic before, and it means that it triggers growth and building of molecules and tissues. All the living cells in our body are essentially little machines that require fuel to work. And in order to get that fuel into the cell, it needs insulin. So if your goal is to build muscle, it'll be to your benefit to trigger insulin so that it can take this fuel into your muscle cells so that it'll be able to work and grow. What triggers insulin? Eating does. And out of all the things we eat, carbohydrates spike it the most, followed by proteins and then fats. Does that mean you can just start eating like the rock and then you'll get this muscular superhero physique? Yes, insulin will bring that energy into your muscle cells to do work and then grow, but it'll also bring it to other cells in your body. And that includes fat. And when there's an excess of any fuel type, the body will store it. So you'll end up with the kind of bulking that you don't want. That's why insulin is also known as a fat storing hormone. 
Insulin also stimulates the growth and storage of triglycerides and fatty acids, and overproduction of these will cause health problems. The main thing I want you to get is that insulin is anabolic, so it makes things grow. So that's something that you really have to consider when making nutrition choices specific to the goals that you want to attain. Secondly, insulin inhibits fat burning. Insulin is a double whammy when it comes to fat. As you just learned, the presence of insulin promotes growth, and that includes the growth of fat cells. The presence of insulin also locks the fat so that you won't be able to burn it. If your goal is to get rid of fat, then minimizing the secretion of insulin should be your priority. And all of the foods that I mentioned earlier, carbohydrates create the biggest insulin spike. And that's why you see all these low carb diet variations out there when it comes to weight loss. Protein also produces a spike. So don't go on thinking that you can eat a ton of protein and expect to reach your fat loss goals either. So is eating high fat the way to go to control insulin? It's a little more complicated than that. But yes, ketones do affect insulin levels the least, but fat is also very energy dense, which makes it very easy to eat more calories than your body needs. And like I said before, excess of anything becomes unused and this unused energy is ultimately going to be stored. And thirdly, excess insulin affects cell communication. Hormones, including insulin, are signaling molecules that tell our cells to perform certain things, which makes it harder for cells to understand, which then requires amplification, which can cause becoming desensitized to the signal. And if it continues, the cell ultimately won't be able to get the message at all. Let me try to explain with an analogy. Do you remember when we used to go to restaurants? Well, imagine you go to a fancy restaurant and the host seats you. She signals the wait staff that there's a hungry customer. The server comes through the service door and offers the daily specials. In a good dining experience, you have good communication with the server, dinner is served, and your belly is happy. But like most busy restaurants, it can be a busy, loud environment. More customers are there for the same service, so it becomes more difficult. The host calls for more staff to assist, all trying to communicate the same thing. And then it becomes a dysfunctional, crowded mess. They try to get the message through by increasing numbers and volume. Food starts building up in the kitchen in hopes to get food to the waiting customers. All the attempts become nothing but numbing noise. And then you just end up with unhappy starved customers. It's an oversimplification, but it's the basic theory on how one develops insulin resistance. You see, when the main mechanism to get fuel into our cells is compromised, all sorts of dysfunction occurs throughout the body. And from an overall health and disease prevention standpoint, I feel this is the most important reason we all need to manage our insulin. And I hope this analogy shows that pumping the body with even more insulin is not the answer. You address this problem by getting real with your nutrition. I'll end it here even though that's not everything there is to know about insulin. But I believe understanding these three functional concepts is invaluable. So I hope you understand the importance of insulin and take it to heart. In fact, your heart and the rest of your organs depend on it. So put nutrition in the forefront of insulin management and I will promise you that health, happiness, and results will happen. Till next time.